So in this video, I'm going to do something <clears throat> a little bit different from previous videos about uh, the implementation of Axie in the abstract. And in this video, I'm going to go over, uh, and in this video series, I'm going to go over the implementation of a very simple Axie master and slave. So in this uh, first video, we're just going to go over the interface of an Axie slave. And in later videos, we can get into the implementation details of the Axie slave. So as this name suggests, it's going to be an Axie slave RAM. So this is going to be an Axie slave that takes in read and write bursts and, uh, you know, does the corresponding writes to an internal RAM and which uh, services the reads by taking the read burst information and then sending out the data that needs to be read back. And we're not going to implement every single feature of Axie because Axie has a lot of miscellaneous features like caching and protection that we're not going to do, but we're going to implement the core addressing and memory access protocol. So Axie's ports, well, there's a pretty large number of ports, even if you exclude some of the uh, more exotic features like protections. And the first two ports are the global signals. They're the clock and the reset. And in the Axie spec, they're called A clock and A reset N. So we'll just be faithful to the spec and name them that. And then we're going to have the ports of the write address channel. So this is a slave, which means that Writes are being done to the slave, right? So the slave is receiving information about write bursts and then doing the writes. So the write, on the write address channel, we're going to implement the address, length, the size of the burst, or the size of each transfer in the burst, the burst type, and then of course we're going to have the control signals valid and ready. And because the master issues bursts, the valid is an input to the Axie slave RAM, and the, va the ready signal is an output. So the RAM says when it's ready to do a new write burst and the user or the master says when they want to start the write burst. <clears throat> so on the write data channel, which is the channel where uh, write data for a burst is sent in, we're going to have the input data, which is data width bits wide. We're going to have the strobe, which is uh, strobe width bits wide. And we've got some parameters here. So notice that I've set data width to be 32. And the strobe width is going to be the data width divided by 8, or the data width divided by the number of bits in a byte, because there's one bit in the strobe for every byte of the data. And that says whether the byte is actually valid data. And I've also set address width to be 8. So for example, uh, AW adder is uh, length 8. And then we're going to have this last bit input, which says whether this is the last write um, in a burst. And then we're going to have valid and ready, and just like with the write address channel, the inputs are coming from the master, or the data is coming from the master, so valid is an input, and ready is an output. Then on the write response channel, the slave produces the write response. So we're going to have the write response field, which is two bits wide, and then we're going to have an output valid, because the slave is going to issue the valid or send the response back, and then we're going to have... <coughs> Uh, an input read be ready saying whether um, the user of this Axie slave is ready to receive the right response at the end of a right burst. And then the read address channel pretty much just looks like the uh, write address channel, but it's reads instead of writes. So we're going to have an address that's address bits wide. We're going to have a length field, um, and then we're going to have a size for the uh, for the number of bits or bytes, excuse me, in each transfer. Uh, and then we're going to have the burst type, and then we're going to have um, a valid and a ready with the valid being an input and the ready being an output. And then we're going to have the read data channel. And notice that the valid and ready are reversed relative to the address channel because the user takes in the, ad or the slave takes in the address data and produces, uh, reads the RAM and sends the uh, resulting data out. So we're going to have a streaming interface here where we have data width bits wide of our data coming out. We're going to have an R response to indicate whether the data coming out uh, is valid or not. And we're going to have a flag R last for whether or not um, this is the last read in a read burst or data corresponding to the last transfer in a read burst. So that's the interface to an Axie slave RAM. And in later videos, um, we can go into the details of analyzing and implementing um, the actual finite state machines that keep track of uh, reads and write bursts and shuffle data to and from memory and out through the interface or into the interface, uh, depending on whether it's a write or a read. So if you like these kinds of more detailed videos going over the implementation of protocols in RTL, um, you know, give this video a like, leave a comment saying that you'd like more videos in this series and let me know and we can uh, flesh things out more. 
Um, but I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope just seeing this interface description is clarifying what, about what Axie is, even though some of the signals, the features like caches, user IDs, um, are not implemented here. So hopefully this was clarifying, and let me know if you'd like more videos going over the implementation of Axie in more detail.